This lecture is about some practical issues that you have, would have to address in evaluation of text retrieval systems. In this lecture, we will continue the discussion of evaluation. We'll cover some practical issues that you have to solve in actual evaluation of text retrieval systems. So in order to create the test collection, we have to create a set of queries, a set of documents, and a set of relevant judgments. It turns out that each is actually challenging to create. So first, the documents and queries must be representative. They must re represent the real queries and real documents that the users handle. And we also have to use many queries and many documents in order to avoid a biased conclusions. For the matching of relevant documents uh, with uh, the queries, we also need to ensure that there exists a lot of uh, relevant documents for each query. If a query has only one, let's say, relevant document in the collection, then you know it's not very informative to compare different methods uh, using such a query because there's not that much room for us to see difference. So ideally, there should be more relevant documents in the collection. But yet, the queries also should represent the real queries that we care about. In terms of relevance judgments, the challenge is to ensure complete judgments of all the documents for all the queries, yet minimizing human effort, because we have to use human labor to label these documents. It's very labor intensive. And as a result, it's impossible to actually label all the documents for all the queries, especially considering a giant uh, data set like the web. So this is actually a major challenge. It's a very difficult challenge. For measures, it's also challenging because we want measures that would accurately reflect the perceived utility of users. We have to consider carefully what the users care about and then design measures to measure that. If we, your measure is not measuring the right thing, then your conclusion would, would be misled. So it's very important. So we're going to talk about a couple of issues here. One is a statistical significance test. And this also is the reason why we have to use a lot of uh, queries. And the question here is, how sure can you be that an observed difference uh, doesn't simply result from the particular queries you choose? So here are some sample results of uh, average position for system A and system B in two different experiments. And you can see uh, in the bottom, we have mean average precision. Right? So the mean, if you look at the mean average precision, uh, the mean average precisions are exactly the same in both experiments. Right? So you can see this is 0.2, this is 0.4 for system B. And again here, it's also 0.2 and 0.4. So they are identical. Yet if you look at the, these exact average precisions for different queries, if you look at these uh, numbers in detail, you will realize that in one case, uh, you would feel that you can trust the, the conclusion here, given by the average. In another case, in the other case, you will feel that, well, I'm not sure. So why don't you take a look at all these numbers for a moment, pause the video. So if you look at the, uh, the average, uh, the mean average position, we can easily say that, well, system B is better, right? So it's after all, it's uh, 0.4, and then this is uh, twice as much as 0.2. So that's a better performance. But if you look at these two experiments and look at the detailed results, you will see that we'll be more confident to say that in the case one, in experiment one, in this case, because these numbers seem to be consistently better for system B. Whereas in experiment two, we're not sure because looking at some results like this, actually system A is better. And this is another case, system A is better. But yet, if we look at the only average, system B is better. So what do you think? You know, how reliable is our conclusion? if we only look at the average. Now, in this case, intuitively, we feel experiment one is more reliable. But how can we quantitatively um, answer this question? And this is 
uh, why we need to do statistical significance test. So the idea of statistical significance test is basically to assess the var variance across these different queries. If there is a, a big variance, that means the, the results could fluctuate a lot according to different queries, then we should believe that uh, unless you have used a lot of queries, the results might change if we will use another set of queries. Right? So this is then um, not, uh, so if you have C high variance, then uh, it's not very reliable. So let's look at the, these um, results again in the second case. Right? So uh, here we uh, show two uh, different ways to compare them. One is a sign test where we just look at the sign. Uh, if system B is better than system A, we have a plus sign. When system A is better, we have a minus sign, etc. Right? So in this case, if you see this, well, there are seven cases. We actually have four cases where system B is better, but three cases, system A is better. Intuitively, this is almost like a random result. Right? So if you just take a random sample of, or to, to, to flip uh, seven coins, and if you use plus to denote the head and then minus to denote the tail, and that could easily be the result of just randomly flipping uh, these seven coins. So the fact that uh, the average is larger doesn't tell us anything. Yeah, we can't reliably conclude that. And this can be quantitatively measured by a, a p-value. And that basically means uh, the probability that this result is in fact from random fluctuation. In this case, probability is one. It means it surely is a random fluctuation. Now in Wilcoxon uh, test, uh, it's a non-parametric um, test, and we would be not only looking at the signs, we'll be also looking at the magnitude of the difference. But we, we can draw a similar conclusion where you say, well, it's very likely to be from random. So to illustrate this, let's think about the, such a distribution. And this is called a null distribution. We assume that the mean is zero here. Let's say we start with the assumption that there's no difference between the two systems. But we assume that because of random fluctuations depending on the queries, we might observe a difference. So uh, the actual difference might be on the left side here or on the right side here, right? So, and this curve kind of shows the probability that we will actually observe values that are deviating from zero. Here. Now, so if we uh, look at this picture, then uh, we see that um, if a difference is observed here, then the chance is very high that this is in fact a random uh, observation, right? We can define a region of you know likely observation because of random fluctuation, and this is uh, ninety-five percent of all the outcomes. And in this interval, then the observed values may still be from random fluctuation. But if you observe a value in this region or a difference on this side, then the difference is unlikely from random fluctuation. Right? So there's a very small probability that you will observe such a difference just because of random fluctuation. So in that case, we can then conclude that the difference must be real. So system B is indeed better. So this is the idea of statistical significance test. Uh, the takeaway message here is that you have to use many queries to avoid jumping into a conclusion, as in this case, to say system B is better. There are many different ways of doing this uh, statistical significance test. So now let's talk about the, the other problem of making judgments. And as we said earlier, it's very hard to judge all the documents uh, completely unless it's a very small data set. So the question is, if we can't afford judging all the documents in the collection, which subset should we judge? And the solution here is um, pooling. And this is a strategy that has been used um, in many um, cases to solve this problem. So the idea of pooling is the following. We would first uh, choose a diverse set of ranking methods. These are text retrieval systems. And we hope these methods can help us nominate uh, likely relevant documents. 
So the goal is to figure out the relevant documents. We want to make judgments on relevant documents because those are the most useful uh, documents from a user's perspective. So then we're going to have each to return top K documents. And the K can vary from systems, right? But the point is to ask them to suggest the most likely relevant documents. And then we simply combine all these top K sets to form a pool of documents for human assessors to judge. So imagine you have many systems, each will return K documents, you know, take the top K documents, and we form the union. Now, of course, there are many documents that are duplicated because many systems might have retrieved the same relevant documents. So um, there will be some duplicate documents. And there are, there are also unique documents that are only returned by one system. And so the idea of having diverse set of result, uh, ranking methods is to ensure the pool is broad and can include as many possibly relevant documents as possible. And then the users would, uh, human assistants would make a complete judgments uh, on this data set, this pool. And the other unjudged documents are usually just assumed to be non-relevant. Now, if the pool is large enough, this assumption is okay. Uh, but the, if the pool is not very large, this actually has to be um, reconsidered. And we might use other strategies to deal with them. And there are indeed other uh, methods to, to handle such uh, cases. And such a strategy is generally uh, okay for comparing systems that contribute to the pool. That means if you participate in contributing to the pool, then it's unlikely that it will penalize your system because the top ranked documents have all been judged. However, this is a problematic for evaluating a new system that may have not contributed to the pool. Now, in this case, you know, a new system might be penalized because it might have nominated some relevant documents that have not been judged. So those documents might be assumed to be uh, non-relevant. That, that's unfair. So to summarize the whole um, part of text retrieval evaluation, it's extremely important because the problem is an empirical defined problem. If we uh, don't rely on users, there's no way to tell whether one method works better. If we have uh, inappropriate experiment design, we might misguide our research or applications, and we might just draw wrong conclusions. And we have seen this in some of our discussion. So make sure to get it right for your research or application. The main methodology is cram field evaluation methodology. And this is still the main paradigm used in all kinds of empirical evaluation tasks, not just the search engine evaluation. MAP and NDCG are the two main measures uh, that uh, you should definitely uh, know about. And they are appropriate for comparing ranking algorithms. You will see them often in research papers. Precision at 10 documents is easier to interpret from a user's perspective. So that's also often useful. What's not covered is um, some other evaluation uh, strategy, like uh, A-B test, uh, where the system would mix two, uh, the results of two methods randomly and then will show the mixed results to users. Of course, the users don't see which result is from which method. The users would judge those results or click on those, um, those documents in, uh, in a search engine application. In this case, then the search engine can keep track of the clicked documents and see if one method has contributed more to the clicked documents. If the user tends to click on one, uh, the results from one method, then it suggests that the, that method may, may be better. So this is to leverage the real users of a search engine to do evaluation. It's called A-B test. And it's a strategy that's often used by uh, the modern search engines, the commercial search engines. Uh, another way to evaluate uh, IR or text retrieval uh, is user studies. And we haven't covered that. I've put some uh, references here that you can look at if you want to know more about that. So there are three additional readings here. These are three uh, mini books about evaluation, and they're all excellent in covering a broad review of information retrieval evaluation, and has covered some of the things that we discussed, but they also have a lot of others to offer. Mm -hmm.